This is exactly right. Welcome. Welcome yourself. <laughs> to me. <laughs> to welcome you, Karen. To me and to everybody. And me too. And me too. To my favorite <laughs> murder. The Bienyoso. The Bienyoso. <clears throat> this is where we read the emails you sent us that are about your hometown murders, things you find in walls, ghosts, grandparents, and the like. Any fucking anything. Um, by the by, and we are two weeks out from the event. You can stop telling us about the teeth, the dentist's teeth in the walls. <laughs> I've gotten over 500 tweets about it. Which in today's money is... Is 2,000 tweets, tweets. about right. a story that you can be sure if something was found in a wall and it's creepy, I hear about it three minutes after uh, that story comes out. That's right. Much well, less we appreciate you thinking about us. And we love you. You don't need to take further steps. So I can get away. Than thinking about us. <laughs> All right, are you ready to dive in? Let's do it. Here's that said, send your send us your actual stories. It, it happened to use yes to my favorite murder at Gmail. Okay, and we begin with a subject line: "My mom survived a clown." <gasps> Hi, Karen, Georgia, and Stephen. You're all bad bitches. Yes, Stephen, you too. Thank you. I was <laughs> thank you on behalf of Stephen. <laughs> I was about, when I was about nine, I was at school and my mom uh, was about to fight a fucking clown. So it's a pretty regular morning for my mom. She's drinking coffee and getting ready. And if she goes to put more cream in her coffee, she sees something out of the corner of her eye and she turns and sees a clown. No, 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 no. Really, it was just a guy with a Halloween clown mask on as she drops the creamer and coffee and runs. Yeah. On her uh, way out of the kitchen, he knocks her down <gasps> and she hits her head on the hardwood floor. Oh, my God. She rega- regains her bearings in time to see him raise a knife <gasps> and she deflects it with her arm what and gets shit? cut on her neck a moment later. Oh, my God. We're, we're in this we're thing. We're in it. At this time, she goes, oh, fuck, I need to fight and hits the guy straight in the nose with her palm, mm-hmm. which is fucking classic self-defense class. That's right. Fucking palm in the nose. That's break right. it up into their brain that's right um and she throws him off her awesome she runs to the bedroom and grabs a gun (gasps) turns around and cocks it right as he's in the doorway holy shit fuck yes apparently he cut his way through the screen in the open kitchen window from the backyard and climbed in this is why i'm never gonna live on a fucking ground floor (laughs) i mean for real uh the guy didn't get caught until years later when he did the same thing but the cops got there in time to catch him meanwhile my school went on lockdown and all I thought of it was why is this girl across the room crying we're gonna be okay <gasps> uh, she only told me after I saw the 2018 winter tour and goes oh th- I guess she mm-hmm. means her mom uh, her mom only told her after she saw the 2018 winter tour and she goes want to hear how I almost got murdered what the fuck thank you all so much Mac Holy shit. I mean, that is... I was waiting for it to be like, and it turned out to be her neighbor pretending to scare her. No, it no. was fucking real. And her mom <gasps> saved it until very recently. Good for her mom. Her mom didn't even tell her when she was in school lockdown that that was like, oh, no, that it's was me of getting me. attacked. Hey, remember got, we got you got home and I had to change the screens? Fucking badass. Dude. Also, just bone chilling. It sounds like hacky. When you hear yeah. it, but you're in your in your kitchen, like stirring up your coffee, just trying yeah. to wrap it up to go to work, and you turn and there's a clown in your kitchen, dude, dude in a clown mask. No, dude, no, no. absolutely not. Get I re- out. I reject you, and I reject Satan, <laughs> who you represent. That's right. Okay, this one's called "Glowing Eyes in the Basement Window." <laughs> no, <laughs> and there's no intro. Okay, because this is for real. Because we got to get to it. This episode's for real. Yep. I grew up in a super small town in northern Wisconsin. I was around 10 years old, and my best friend and I were excited to go to a youth group at her church that night. Since her mom was part of the church's band, we had to get there early for them to rehearse. We got there. We were the only kids. We went down to the basement where the group rooms were located to play around until the until group started. Um, the basement was broken up into four quadrants with each 
each with their own lights. So we only had the lights on in our quadrant of the basement and the rest of the rooms were dark. Mm. It was also dark outside by this time, so I'm feeling a little creeped out by being in this old church. There's also a window in that room that was at ground level and then it says important. (laughs) So we found a bouncy ball and we're bouncing it back and forth to each other when my friend bounces it wildly to me and I miss the catch. The ball proceeds to bounce off the walls and into the windowsill that is kind of pushed back into the wall. Mm -hmm. We follow the ball around the room and when it reaches said windowsill, we both freeze because in this window we can make out the outline of a head with the biggest glowing white (laughs) eyes. We both look at each other with the same terrified face and start screaming (laughs) as if we aren't scared enough already. As we start to run up the stairs, we can hear the figure fucking yelling. No. Help me. No. We are practically in tears at this point and we run to her mom and explain what we saw. (laughs) She didn't believe us at first, of course, but we were both really distraught. So she finally agreed to investigate. As we went outside, we could hear someone still yelling help me no this is when my mom's face turned to uh this is when her mom's face turned to an oh shit look yeah not knowing what the fuck could be behind this old church my mom decided to call the cops so they could investigate good once they arrived we went behind the church to find (gasps) not a terrifying glowing eyed creature but in fact a poor old lady who had fallen off a ladder in her backyard (laughs) She had broken her leg, so when she saw the basement light turn on, she crawled her way to the ground level window to see if we could help. Oh my god, it's scarier! It's scarier! Her reality. huge old lady glasses were reflecting the light coming from the basement, which made her look absolutely terrifying. I felt so bad afterwards that it had taken us that, that long to get her help, but hey, better safe than sorry. SSGGM, your favorite rugby player, Shelby. Shit, Shelby. <laughs> Hells yes. I know. First of all, my favorite girl's name, Shelby, I'm assuming. Uh-huh. That is fucking... How scary is that? They were... They really were seeing something. They, it was real. And it was yelling, help me. It was real. <laughs> it was a poor old lady. And it First was- of all... Lady, what are you doing on your roof? Lady, why Stop are you it. on a ladder? You're an old lady. Ask your neighbor to help. If your glasses are this thick, yeah, yeah. you should not get up no, on a ladder. Absolutely not. That's the sign I and put then next she to all old lady has ladders. The army crawl to the basement oh. window and is like, help, help me. me, my leg's broken. And then these little kids start screaming at you. Oh. Also, like, oh, it's like she's been laying there all day. Yeah, and yeah. Then it's like the light comes on on the chair. Oh, like, oh, oh, oh. Thank oh. you. I'm so thirsty. Oh god! I so want awful. a cup of all I wanted a cup of tea. A lemon balm tea. <laughs> oh, it's awful. So sad. Shit, that was a good one. Yeah, Shelbs. Okay. God, there's so many good ones in this, Stephen. I like Stephen. You gave her all the good ones I, this time. Really good ones. Okay. How about this? Uh, subject line is: I never thought I would have anything to write. Surprise. <laughs> Hello, Karen, Georgia, Stephen, Elvis, Mimi, Dottie, Kitty, and my favorite, Frank and George. I have par- a part hound dog so as well, so I get it all. Jesus. Wow, okay. <laughs> oh, Dottie Kitty. Dottie Kitty is her hashtag on Instagram. <laughs> Got it, okay. So, to start my story, I have been envious of all the people who have hometown murders. Um, I realized that I had a paranormal story instead. So, the apartment I grew up in used to be an old coffin factory. Great! I mean... Perfect! D- just like, why not buy that when gather all the children you can to move in? You know, I, w- I know you said you want my, room, my rent to be 1200 a month, but I'm going to pay 1300 just to live there. Yeah. Because that sounds great. Because what... <laughs> What but great things can be happening in a coffin factory? I want to fall asleep at night thinking about the coffins that were made here. On the conveyor belt of coffins. That's right. And all the great things. Okay, so Mm -hmm. listen to this shit. Okay. My dad would tell us stories about how some workers died when improperly using the equipment. What a dick your dad is. I mean, that's a lot of love. (laughs) Me at seven or so, hearing a story about how a woman got her hair stuck in a machine (gasps) and got her hair pulled out scalp and all jesus christ yeah anyways on to my story that's not even the story that's just an example of shit her dad said to her dad go to sleep good night 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 don't look for big glowing eyes in the church window (laughs) okay um on to my story as a child our bathroom was across the hall 
from mine and my parents' room. So one night I was getting up and walking to the bathroom and there was a, a large lady with a feather in her hat in my way. She was blocking the bathroom and I really needed to pee. So I started shouting at her like any child <laughs> who didn't get what they wanted. Oh my God. <laughs> what you wanted was to go to the bathroom. Yeah. My dad woke up to me shouting at her and watched the whole thing. The next morning he asked me what she looked like and I described to a T what the wife of the owner of the <gasps> coffin factory looked like. <sighs> Other times in that apartment, I would wake up feeling extremely trapped in my bed with all the sides blocked and no Because it's a coffin! Much love, Sarah. That's <laughs> it. She's just gone. Peace out? She And she, like a lady with a feather in her hat ghost, is just gone. Peace out. Peace, baby. That's the whole oh story. Oh, my God. <laughs> Beautifully written. Beautifully written, written. So she, as a child, would wake up feeling like she was in a coffin. Oh, my God. Peace out. Mm. Okay. Mimi has placed her entire body on top of my stories. Oh, look at this. Is, we Ugh. call this story Mimi's choice. Because Mimi wants to do what Mimi wants to do. Okay. <laughs> this one's called Career Advice from a Mobster. Dear Karen, Georgia, Stephen, Pets, and Vince. Oh, thank you. I think he'd really appreciate that. I do too. I grew up in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn during the reign of the Gambino crime family. Oh, shit. In the late 1980s, a new family moved onto our block. They moved into a kind of rundown apartment, but then renovated it themselves. That was unheard of for renters to do. It's fucking right. Yeah. We came to hear rumors that the family, father of the family that moved in was involved in the mafia. Rumors like this were common, but in this case, it was true. Uh, Norman DuPont was an all around nice guy to his neighbors. He had a remote control starter for his SUV before they were common Ooh. in case of car bombs. <gasps> Shit. He liked to start his car from the window of a second floor apartment while people were walking by and watched them jump with fright. <laughs> <laughs> what a dick. <laughs> One day, around 1993 or 1994, I was waiting for the bus to go to the orthodontist. Norman pulled up to the bus stop and asked me wh where I was going and if I wanted a ride. Uh-oh. I got in. Yes, you did. Because uh -huh, it was 93. And it was a, a, a big SUV. It was your neighbor. Yeah. I know that sounds crazy, but back then, uh, but back in that day, it was okay. <laughs> sure. It was a bit awkward because everyone knew my father had just left and my parents were going through a bitter divorce. That scenario wasn't common yet. He tried to make conversations. He asked what I wanted to do when I got older. I told him I didn't know. I was 13 or 14 at the time. And he said, you should become a funeral director. You could make a lot of money working with guys like me. Do you know what I do? <laughs> Uh, I couldn't tell if he was showing off, trying to act cool or what. I played it off and giggled. I couldn't wait to get out of the car. Shortly thereafter, he went to jail for murder and was sentenced to life plus 25 years. Shit. I saw the mafia take care of his wife and kids with envelopes for a few years after that, but that stopped. Reading about that time, linked below, he had already committed the murder that he was convicted of when he was driving her. Oh, shit. Yikes. Stay sexy and don't take rides from hitmen. M. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell us not to take rights from Hitman when you, you fucking did it. You're the one. Just point that finger back at yourself. <laughs> With America's number one meal kit, HelloFresh, you'll get easy seasonal recipes and pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door. All you have to do is cook and enjoy. HelloFresh makes cooking delicious meals at home a reality. From step-by-step -step recipes to pre-measured ingredients, you'll have everything you need to get a wow-worthy dinner on the table in about 30 minutes. Say goodbye to endless grocery store trips and takeout. HelloFresh has you covered. There's something for everyone from family recipes to calorie smart and vegetarian and fun menu series like Hall of Fame and, and Kraft Burgers. HelloFresh has more five-star recipes than any other meal kit, so you'll know you're getting something incredible. HelloFresh is flexible and it fits your lifestyle, easily change your delivery days, food preferences, and skip a week whenever you need. Break out of your dinnerette and make deliciousness part of every week with HelloFresh. I love that even though HelloFresh is super easy and they make it really basic and like straightforward, you still feel like you're cooking this like incredible home cooked dinner and that makes me feel good about myself. And that instead of just ordering takeout, I'm actually making something and preparing something at home and that just, it feels good. So for $80 off your first month of HelloFresh, go to HelloFresh.com slash Murder80 and enter Murder80. It's like receiving eight meals for free only at HelloFresh.com slash Murder80, promo code Murder80. Go by. There's two that are so good, but uh, I guess I'll just read this one. Save it for the next one. Okay. <laughs> 
I'm not going to read you the subject line. Okay. Sup, guys. I wanted to write you guys to share a story that my parents have recounted to me multiple times throughout my life and for years made me pretty uneasy when I'd go out for dinner at a hibachi restaurant. Oh, no. <laughs> when I was a baby living it up in New Jersey. <laughs> Baby! Oh, just a little baby having a good time in New Jersey. I love it. Where all the fun's at. Living it up. Um, my parents decided to go out for dinner and sit at a hibachi table. With a baby? With a baby. As hibachi chefs do, he began performing by doing knife tricks. <gasps> this didn't last no. long, however, because according to my dad, he lost control of <gasps> one of the knives and it went hurtling towards my little baby body. No! My dad saved my life by deflecting the knife with the side of his hand, which he still has a faint scar from. Oh, my God. Apparently, after this incident, the chef began to cry hysterically and left the hibachi table. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> it's, the best. it's like... It's terrible. It's like Benny Hanna. Yeah. Those people are so good at what they do and they do it so masterfully and they like crack yeah, eggs yeah. on the side of knives and shit. Can you imagine one just bursting into tears? Yeah. It's so Because he almost hilarious. just killed a baby. Because he almost killed a baby. Um, oh, Lily, well, I wouldn't bring my... I'm sorry, but I would not bring my baby to a fucking hibachi table. Well, no bet, judgment to her family. I bet they only did it a couple times after that. <laughs> Um, but also it makes me think, did that guy get pressured into being a hibachi yeah, chef? Where he was like, I never I, wanted to. Or was he retiring the next day? Oh, it was, it, he had 40 years of an unmarked career. <laughs> and then right. this fucking bossy New Jersey baby comes up to his table. <laughs> Baby's drunk as shit. Uh, just Give me the... pointing, constantly pointing at the shrimp. Flip that one. Yeah, pointing it, pointing it, pointing. Oh, so much baby pointing. <laughs> um, Come on, baby. Okay. Sometimes I think about him and hope he's doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> because I know I wouldn't be. Oh. Uh, although this was over 20 years ago, the story still gets to me and I literally cannot look at a hibachi table without thinking of the thought of impending doom. Stay sexy and don't get impaled, Mary. That was, that's the perfect, we, we also asked for, pa like, when your parents almost killed you yep. stories. That's That was a great one. It's a great ver it's version of. Can I just do a real quick one? Please. This one's called called My Grandmother Bit a Nazi. Yes. And I feel like we all, it's like a good time in our lives. Hells yeah. This. Hello, longtime listener, first time writer. My grandmother, Wilma, grew up in Germany in World War II. Mm. Some of the families in her community took turns hiding a box in their houses. This box contained valuables that belonged to the Jewish other Jewish families in town. Mm. Once the Nazi soldiers heard of this, they wanted to put a stop to it. When the soldiers came to my grandmother's door, her dog was barking. This gets sad. So fucking, so a fucking Nazi shot and killed her dog. Yep. Wilma, who was 10 to 12 years old at this time, was so upset she bit the Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Her family was punished and she eventually was able to flee to England before settling in Canada. She never smoke, spoke much about her childhood, but someone from a community paper interviewed her and published her story in a paper. I thought you would like the story about a badass little girl biting a Nazi, Aaron. Now Mama, I'm crying. Now I'm I crying. Oh, I no. hate Nazis so much. It, also, it's just like, it, think of any fucking World War II Nazi movie that you've seen and how oppressive and awful their presence is and they go into these towns and take over mm. and fucking turn people against each other and they're monsters and this little girl is just like you fucking killed my dog I don't yeah. give a shit what you do yeah. you killed my dog I'm gonna do the only thing I can I'm gonna bite you yeah and you it's fucking so deserve it you goddamn Nazi <sighs> I love Wilma. 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 Yay. I also love, it's, that's such a great idea that like, then she emigrates to England. She emigrates to Canada. She fucking lives her private life. Yeah. And then somebody sits her down like and her, goes, yeah. hey, hey, what's, give me some highlights. Do you have any stories? She's oh. like, yeah, I got a story for you. I've been a Nazi once. Yeah. As a child. And I'm here to tell the tale. <laughs> um, so bad. Send us your stories. We love them. They're the best. God damn it. That was such a good batch. Yeah. Um, and thank you guys for listening and writing. And we, we love it. And uh, stay sexy. And don't get murdered. <gasps> Goodbye. Goodbye. Should we see if Mimi will meow again? Yeah. Mimi, you want a cookie? <laughs> did it work? <laughs> yeah. Elvis, you want a cookie too? Want a cookie? Ah.